we're going to talk about the end of John chapter 11 called The Plot to Kill Jesus, starting in verse 45. And what happens here is Jesus has just raised Lazarus and the Pharisees find out about it. They get all mad. And this is where they plot to kill Jesus and take him out once and for all because of the signs and wonders. They're worried about people believing him and follow him. And in verse 48, it says, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe him and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all, nor do you understand that it's better for you that one man should die for the people and not that the whole nation should perish. He did not say this of his own accord, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation and not for the nation only, but also to gather into one the children of God who were scattered abroad. So from that day on, they made plans to put him to death. Now, this is interesting. Caiaphas, the high priest of the Pharisees, prophesied that Jesus was going to die. Well, this is true. This is a true prophecy that we saw, we've saw. we seen it in the Old Testament. This was all prophesied. Also, Jesus is walking around the whole time saying, I'm going to die. I'm going to be crucified. I'm, the Son of Man is going to be delivered over. We know this is what's going to happen. Um, but what was interesting about this that the Holy Spirit started dealing with me about is when you're trying to walk out the call of God in your life and you're operating in ministry, doing something like this, like going online or, you know, um, <clears throat> any kind of ministry that involves other people, the enemy and religious spirits are going to rear their head when their ears are perked. Oh, there's something going on over here. And it is of the Lord. The spirit is moving. People's lives are being changed. People are encountering God in a real way, it's going to make mad the religious people. That religious spirit will rise up because the religious spirit wants control. It needs to maintain control at all costs and bring the glory to itself. That is the difference between religious people and people who are really following the Lord in spirit and in truth and worshiping in spirit and in truth. They want God to receive the glory, not themselves. And here we see a perfect example of this. Verse 48 says, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe him, aka they'll stop looking at us and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. They were worried about losing their position and they were worried about this relationship they had with the Romans and that the Romans would see, oh, they can't control their own people, so we're going to take over. And then they're going to lose all of their power. So they were worried about losing their power and their position. So they were going to murder Jesus. So religion cares greatly about power and position. The next interesting thing is that Caiaphas prophesied, hey, Jesus is going to die and it's going to be this year. He was trying to take credit. This religious spirit was trying to take credit for what God had already designed and set up to do. But even furthermore, and I say he was trying to take credit because they started to actually plot to kill him. So I don't know if he knew that this was actually going to be a prophecy that came to pass because of the scripture that they already had. And Jesus was walking around saying it anyway, or if he truly thought that he was going to deceive receive the people by plotting to kill Jesus. And Caiaphas was clearly doing this so that people would see him as the true man of God here. Oh, well, I prophesied his death and look, he died. So I must be of God. So that religious spirit is very deceptive. It's very sneaky. It's always plotting behind the scenes to try and take down the man of God. And in this case, Jesus, it's going to try and take you out. If you are stepping out in faith, if you are being bold in your faith, if you are doing everything you can to follow what God has called you to do in this season or just in your life in general, there are going to be people that come along that are Christians that are going to plot against you. This is biblical. This is what happens. Jesus said, if they did it to me, they'll do it to you. So from that day on, they made plans to put him from death. So that was the line in the sand. They said, okay, from here on out, we're going to kill this man if we see him. But this is what's so cool about how God works, how the Holy Spirit works. The same spirit that was in Jesus is in us. If you've received him as Lord and Savior, that we have the Holy Spirit now. It says, Jesus therefore no longer walked openly among the Jews, but went from there to the region near the wilderness to a town called Ephraim. And there he stayed with the disciples. It doesn't say anybody went and told Jesus. Maybe they did. Maybe this got back to him somehow. I don't know. But it says, therefore, 
he no longer walked openly among the Jews. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and many went up from the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They were looking for Jesus and saying to one another as they stood in the temple, What do you think, that he will not come to the feast at all? Now the chief of priests and Pharisees had given orders that if anyone knew where he was, he should let them know so they might arrest him. So here was that plot. They were going to come catch him by surprise at the Passover, at the Passover feast. But Jesus knew this. See, whenever you're operating in the power of the Holy Spirit, whenever you're operating in the Word of God, you know the Word of God, you're spending time with the Lord, you know the heart of the Father, and you know what He's called you to. You know what the will of God is for your life because He's told you you have a relationship with Him, and you're walking that out. The Lord will give you divine insight to particular situations that are set up against you. Look, y'all, whatever your ministry is or whatever your calling is, you're going to have to learn that these things are going to happen. People are going to come against you. Look, I've made so many enemies on the internet already. There's already people that are actually so upset that I walk in here from time to time into a room in my own house and get on camera and share the word of God with people. That is offensive to people. And I'm not talking about people who are unsaved. I'm talking about Christians. They get mad about it. They get upset about it. They come at me. They make mean remarks, mean comments. They say all sorts of things to me. But that tells me that I'm exactly where the Lord wants me to be. And I'm right in the middle of his will for my life. God only gave me two instructions of things he wanted me to do in this season of my life. And I'm doing both of them. And in both of them, people are coming against me. People are upset about it. People are mad about it. People have an opinion of about it and that's okay but I'm still going to continue to be obedient and that's why I'm making this video is I want you to see that you're not alone if you're like me and you're just trying to step out you're just trying to share the word of God you're just trying to be obedient to what God's asked you to do be encouraged hang in there like the same spirit that's in Jesus is in you the Lord has been giving me prophetic dreams prophetic insight and none of which I need to share online for me and my house and for my family. And he has protected me from so many things. He's protected me and my wife from so many things. That's why that verse where Jesus doesn't go to the Passover is so, was so close to home to me because the Lord has shown me over the last couple of weeks that he has protected us from some very difficult things very difficult situations because we are in the middle of his will because we are being obedient because we are listening to his voice and not the voice of everybody else that has an opinion we're not listening to that religious spirit we're not listening to anything else other than the word of god and the last instruction that the lord gave us to do so i want to encourage you that if that's you if you're in that same place to keep going keep doing it it might be hard it might be tough but the Lord is on your side he will give you that insight he will speak to you through that still small voice of the Holy Spirit so just hang in there and be in prayer be in the word and you have to have your guard up look in this season two it's so important that you watch what you say you watch what you do you watch how you're walking you know your integrity is very important your character is very important so what you do in public needs to line up with how you are in secret you do have to be a man and woman of integrity and of character like Jesus is constantly coming against the Pharisees about washing the outside of the cup so that the inside looks clean when he's saying why don't you just wash out the inside then the whole cup is clean and that's what God's calling us to in this season to be pure before his eyes so that no man can come against you and say anything about you and the Lord will protect us so that when those attacks come we are safe in his arms you know I've been reading through Psalms a lot lately and just to see the way David chased after God the way he pours out his heart before the Lord is just so inspiring to me and that is my prayer it's my prayer for you as well like God make us like David give us the heart of David who had a heart after you Lord so um, let me just pray real quick and end this video and I just want wanted to hop on here and say that and encourage you if you're in a place of dealing with spiritual attacks remember Ephesians 6 Put on the armor of God. It will save you in this season. It will be the thing that protects you in this season. 2 Corinthians 10, take every thought captive to obey Christ. Don't let the enemy play with your mind in this season. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you in the name of Jesus that you are good. You are the God above all things. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You're not bound to time and space, Lord. You're the God who was and is and is to come, Lord. And you know what we're facing. You know what 
we're up against. You know every circumstance that's coming our way, Lord, and we thank you for your divine protection. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the one that empowers us, emboldens us to continue moving forward in your word, in your will, to walk out the instruction, the call, the ministry that you have on our lives, God. So we just humble ourselves before you, God, in this season, Lord. We just ask that you expose every trap of the enemy, Lord, that we might not step in it erroneously or ignorantly, Lord, but you would give us prophetic insight to the trappings of the enemy that would try to take us down, that would try to discourage us, that would try to catch us off guard. Lord, I just pray, um, Lord, that our guard would be up in this season. Uh, In Ephesians 6, over everybody hearing this, Lord, that we would have on the full armor of God to stand and withstand the fiery darts of the enemy no matter what season we are in lord i just thank you jesus for this i thank you for your word that is our guiding light lord it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path and i thank you god that we can trust in you and acknowledge you in all of our ways and you will direct our paths god i thank you for your promises lord we trust you we lean into you and i just thank you and pray this in jesus name amen so thank you so much for watching today. I hope this encouraged somebody. Uh, Let me know what you think in the comments if so, and I will see you in the next one.